I, I, I didn't know what to expect in terms of how long this was going to last. It was a, a scary time. This was about four months where I, I, I couldn't see my family. We've all been standing by as the world has gone through a hell of a period. Now to growing concerns about the deadly coronavirus. Federal health officials began screening travelers from the city of Wuhan. I am officially declaring a national emergency. The Dow plunging more than 1,000 points. Public schools will remain closed. 110,000 restaurants closed permanently. Local theaters are worried. Mom and pop shops, especially hard hit. You must stay at home. I think for all of us individually, right, trying to figure out what the new normal means for us. For a lot of companies, it was like a screeching halt to their business. And over the last year, you had to be resourceful. You had to you know, figure out what is the value that I provide and really, frankly, to be creative. You know, we had continuity plans and we had, you know, you know disaster recovery plans, but we, we, we never really envisioned a day where our people could no longer go visit a customer. I think this is the fifth if I'm counting right, downturn that I've lived and worked through. But this one was very different. When the dust settles on this pandemic, we are going to return to a completely irrevocably changed world. COVID-19 restrictions have paralyzed business owners. The sparking fears on Wall Street. That booming snapback you thought we were going to get is going to take quite a bit longer. Some economists are calling this a K-shaped recession because you're really seeing a divergence of two types of companies. In the first half of 2020, traditional companies have seen their revenue shrink by 10%. Subscription-based businesses have done roughly twice as well as non-subscription-based businesses. They're growing at 10, 15, 20%. The fastest ones, companies like Zoom, are actually even tripling in size in just less than a year. There is no doubt that every company on the planet has woken up to the fact that they have got to pivot to selling consumption. The shift to subscription-based business model has been going on for many, many years, right? You can sort of feel this. We're all reaching to Uber. We're all reaching for services like Netflix. You know, we're going to go to the supermarket less and less. We're all used to being able to grab our phones and access food, entertainment, work, whatever it is that we need. The trends that were in place at the beginning of this pandemic uh, it just threw gasoline on them. It's a very unusual uh, moment uh, that is leading to uh, what's likely to be a very different world when we come out on the other side. So the pandemic's moved us forward 10 years and 10 months. And I actually think that this shock to the system at the end of the day is gonna be very positive for companies, those who survive. It has been a motivating factor unlike anything anybody who's watching this has ever seen to force change into companies. Look, if there's a lesson for 2020 for businesses is if you're not moving to a subscription economy, you're not gonna exist in three to four years. The ability to adapt to change, that's been a success characteristic of companies for decades. To find a similar shift to what's going on right now, you probably have to go back 100, 150 years towards the Industrial Revolution. And just like back then, businesses that didn't make the shift simply weren't competitive and they went out of business. And you're gonna see the same thing happening today. It may sound like hyperbole to compare the subscription business model with the invention of the internet or the Industrial Revolution, but it's absolutely true. Transitions like this happen once in a century. There's a famous line from Henry Ford that says, you could have any color as long as it's black. It turns out black paint dries the fastest and is the most efficient way to get cars off the assembly line. And so for the last 120 years, that's what it's been about. More efficient creation of products, more cars, more laptops, more pens. And ultimately, it winds up in a landfill. And that just was not a sustainable model. But there's a much, much better model now. Call it the subscription economy a new and different way of doing business that's good for companies and great for their customers. Being dubbed the subscription economy, analysts are looking at the success of Amazon's Prime service and calling for other companies to follow suit. Increasingly, we live in a subscription economy. Such services have been on the rise amid the pandemic. Something more and more like subscription services are the future. Customer-centric subscription businesses in many, many industries 
were taking off before the pandemic. What's happened is the pandemic has accelerated that change. I don't think any CEO in their right mind doesn't believe that this change is inevitable. If you're not making that kind of transformation, you better have some really good reasons why not. Companies that have been able to make this shift to be flexible, to deliver customer-centric services, they're doing really, really well. Subscription businesses have grown six times faster. Think about that, six times faster than traditional businesses in the S&P 500. From the venture capital side, it's kind of unheard of to be investing in non-recurring revenue companies. It's gone from being an exception case to being the vast majority. So with a subscription model, you can essentially see into the future. Valuations on a dollar of recurring revenue is significantly higher than a dollar of revenue in a one-time sale because it's predictable, it's renewable. It can go on and on and on and on. Pretty routinely, subscription model companies are valued two to three X higher. You contrast that with non-subscription businesses where every quarter have to start on the zero yard line and traverse the entire field to get to their revenue targets. If you're not making that type of shift to a model that is more sustainable, more predictable, that's an investor risk, that's an investor red flag. Oftentimes people think of subscriptions as it's a pricing model or it's simply you pay something per month. That's not what we're talking about here. We're not talking about a financial construct. The subscription economy is a fundamentally different way of creating relationships between companies and individuals. You've got this built-in base of predictable revenue that's built on the loyalty that you've established with your customers. The subscription provider has a vested interest in making sure that that customer sees value, not on the first day, not on the second day, but for the next month and for the series of years that they're using that product and service. And not only that they see value, but that that value keeps on getting better. So it's both a better from the cust your end customer's perspective and it's better from the perspective of the valuation of your business. So why wouldn't you go there? A lot of the changes that we've seen, these were initiatives, these were strategies that had been set into play before the pandemic hit. There was a study by the Harris Poll that showed across international adults 75% of them actually said they will buy less and less stuff going forward. But ownership is going away. The question is what replaces it? What replaces it is this concept of usership. Usership is the idea that you don't need to own a product or service in order to get value out of it. Less cars being sold and owned in the traditional sense, but miles driven way up. Less video game consoles being sold, but the amount of gamers is increased exponentially. And we're seeing this play out in industry after industry after industry. Whatever passion you have, there's probably a subscription for it. The, the truth is, when you, when you really step back and think of it, owning something is a burden. It's an albatross, right? You own something, you have to worry about it. Is it going to be obsolete? What are you, how are you going to dispose of it? What if it breaks? You have to maintain it. And so if you're just trying to get from point A to point B, why should you have to worry about when's the last time you, know, you, you took the car in for service? Does it have gas? Is the insurance paid, right? You should just be able to get what you want uh, when you want it without any of those hassles. The subscription model entirely alleviates you from the burden of ownership. When you start to look at the world through the lens of usership, it naturally lends itself to an ever improving service. The service is getting better and better because there's somebody on the other side right, who's interested in keeping you as a customer, making you happy. We were able to double and triple our investments in what was working and really focus on making the customer happy. And that is what the benefit of going digital, going direct, and going subscription is. Most businesses today are product-centric. If you want your customers to love you forever and be loyal to them, you have to be customer-centric. We are in a relationship 365 days a year now, and they tell us through their behavior what they want more of and what they want less of. You can continue to add value every second of every day. What we're witnessing right now is nothing less than the end of ownership and the rise of usership. 
Companies today have to focus on their business model as a consumption-based business model, not a unit-sold business model. Rather than thinking about yourself as an automotive company, think of yourself as a mobility company, as a company that helps people achieve an outcome. When you build a business model that's based on consumption, that's based on usership, based on value, consumption goes up and your revenues will naturally start to grow. But there's one thing the pandemic has made clear, is that your entire business can be upended overnight. And no one has the opportunity or the luxury of maintaining the status quo in today's market. Economies are impacted by technology transformations all the time, right? This is a business model transformation. And I mean, it is life or death. If you're not doing this, right, you're, you're in danger. I think there's a stat out there that says really 52% the Fortune 500 companies just from 20, 30 years ago just don't exist today. I can't candy coat this. It is hard, it is challenging, but there is no other option. The other option is walk away from your future. The root of the word crisis in the Greek language is opportunity. And while it's brutal to think about finding opportunity in this terrible time, the reason why companies are doing the hard work is because on the other side of the, the chasm is rich and beneficial. Better for customers, it's better for innovation, it's better for, for building resilience into your model, it's more stable. Look, the subscription business model is one of the most consequential transformations of our time. The opportunities on the other side are enormous. It might seem like a big challenge, to overcome and to, to become a company in the subscription economy, but you can plot the journey step by step. For companies that are moving down this path, I would tell you to focus on your customer first and foremost. That's your North Star. That's your way through the wilderness. Launch something, get to know your customers, and learn. The second thing is there's no need to take this journey alone. There are lots and lots of other companies on the same journey to usership. You can learn from best practices. You can learn from peers you can learn from data. We're seeing some of the best forward-thinking leaders at these very large traditional enterprises think about how do they move there as much as possible and as soon as possible. You have to get the board, the shareholders, the executives, even the customers, you've got to get everybody aligned and then you got to go like hell. You cannot hesitate, you got to be all in. Right out that window is downtown San Francisco and there are companies out there right now trying to figure out how to disrupt your company. They're very heavily funded. They're gonna be knocking on your customer's door. If you don't transform your business model to be dependent on your customers, you're very, very vulnerable to your customers being stolen away. It takes a real grown-up to make that hard decision that what's gonna be important for me now is to prioritize my future customers over my existing shareholders. Companies that do not change simply do not survive. The opportunities in terms of building these enduring relationships with customers, the opportunity to see double-digit growth in industries and in companies that have only seen that type of growth in the distant past. In the last 12 months and the year 2020 has only made that even more clear. This last year obviously has been a very, very typical year. It's been a lot of pain. Businesses have seen challenges like they've never seen before. And while the journey ahead might have twists and turns, at the end of it is a much stronger company, one that grows, once it understands its customers, one that is more competitive, and one that's gonna be highly relevant in a winner in this new subscription economy.